in these special cases, we have the story of Father Flanagan's life. And we start with this very special image of Father arriving at Ellis Island. He was 18 years old and he came to America in 1904. He had the dream to become a priest. He struggled for quite a while, but finally achieved that goal. And how he ended up in Omaha was in the photograph with Father Flanagan. You'll see a picture of his older brother, Patrick. And Patrick came to Omaha to found a parish. So that's why Father Flanagan followed him to come to the city of Omaha. And then in the case too, we have a special image of Father Flanagan's mom and dad and brothers and sisters, because eventually the entire family immigrated to Omaha so they could stay together. Two sisters remained in Ireland, but otherwise the rest of the Flanagan family came to uh, America. We have some of Father Flanagan's vestments, his chalice his mother gave him, and we have a case dealing with his work to shut down all the reformatories and across America. He hated reform schools when he shut them down. Father Flanagan was a great supporter of the nation of Israel. We have a certificate uh, where several trees are named for Father Flanagan is in Israel. Um, that was through Henry Monsky, our first donor. He founded B'nai B'rith, and Father Flanagan helped him in his mission to help create the nation of Israel. In 1947, he went on his mission to Asia. We have images of him with General MacArthur, and he visited the Emperor and Empress of Japan. He went to the Philippines and Korea. And then we have an image of Father Flanagan presenting his report to President Truman at the White House. The report was called Children of Defeat, and the Japanese government took this report and created child labor laws, which they still use today. And the largest image in that final section on Father Flanagan is an image of Father taken in Berlin, Germany, just a few hours before he passed away. And when Father Flanagan uh, passed away, our next director, Monsignor Wegner, took over. He was born and raised in a farm in Nebraska. We have some of his vestments and, and a chalice presented to him. And then in 1954, the State Department sent him on a worldwide tour. They wanted to stop the spread of communism. So he went on this international uh, tour for about a year and helped found Boys Towns all around the world. There's around 89 Boys Towns around the world, many of them inspired by Boys Town. We do not directly support them, but they come to us for support and uh, for ideas and concepts in creating their homes. Monsignor Robert Hupp, our next director, was also born raised in a farm in Nebraska, served in World War II, and he was appointed to serve at the UN by President Ford. Back in 1976 was the year of the child, so we went to the United Nations and for a year represented the United States at the, Uni uh, at the United Nations. We have our final case in this section, and it deals with our famous visitors. And Lou Gehrig and big Babe Ruth are big supporters of Boys Town. We have our Babe Ruth baseball there. We have our bus to Lou Gehrig. And then we also have images of Father Flanagan selling tickets to Clark Gable and Norma Shear, one of our football games. Robert Kennedy stopping by our village. Barbara Bush reading to the children at our school. And St. Teresa when she came to the village. We do a booster banquet every year. And so in the case, we have some sports memorabilia, including uh, a football from Drew Brees. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar stopped by to see the, the kids not too long ago. And we have a Simpsons cartoon. And we also have our, our special Emmy that was created for our Boys Town Hotline and the Olympic torch that was carried through the village back in the Olympics or Salt Lake City by our Mayor Amanda. And next we can step on and we'll learn about our alumni and what they've done, uh, learning about the boys and girls who've lived here at Boys Town over the decades. This is our alumni section of our uh, Hall of History, and then this uh, exhibit area, we talk about our former boys and girls. We've had over 40,000 boys and girls live in the village of Boys Town over the decades. During World War II, Father Flang was named America's number one war dad. Hundreds of boys listed him as his only next of kin. And some of our most famous alumni in command, uh, include Commander Lloyd Booker, who was skipper of the Pueblo that was captured by the North Koreans and held for a year in 1969. And also we have Cecil Stout, who was White House photographer, President Kennedy who took the very famous photo of President Johnson being sworn in at Air Force One after President Kennedy's assassination. We have a very special statue back here. This is based upon the original photo taken in 1920, and it's an image of two boys that were in the village of Boys Town. One was named Howard Loomis. Howard was born with, and had polio and heavy braces on his legs, and his mother kept begging Father Flanagan to take him in. Finally, Father Flanagan agreed to take him in, and he could live in the village of Boys Town, but he had great difficulty going up and down the steps and outside to play. So Reuben Granger, an older boy, would carry him outside to play. Father Flanagan saw this and, re and realized this was a perfect image for the village of Boys Town. And this goes back to Father Flanagan's concept, everyone in the village helps each other. So even today, everyone in the village of Boys Town, from Father Bays to everyone else working here, our own mission is to, hear, to be here and help the children of Boys Town. Every Friday we have a swearing in ceremony at our, our visitor center where new residents become citizens of the village of Boys Town. And during that our children take an oath, become citizens of the village of Boys Town. And they'll be a brother or sister to the other children living here. And that's very important because Father Flying said Boys Town is a family and the children here are brothers and sisters.
for our 95th anniversary, Boys Town commissioned the uh, Boys Town alumnus, Mr. Paul Otero, to create the special portrait of Father Flanagan. Paul works in graphite pencil, so he came to our Hall of History collection, selected an image of Father Flanagan that had never been published before, took it back to his studio, took a piece of paper and a graphite pencil, and created this image of Father Flanagan. It is now our official portrait of Father Flanagan, and when you come visit the village of Boys Town, you can see the portrait on display throughout the village.